Hey, my name is Shelby. Today I'm going to demonstrate italic numerals. They're done at a 25 degree pen angle. I'm using my yellow parallel pen and these numerals are done at capital height so that's seven and a half pen widths tall. So that's going to be this high from the X to this dotted line. The one I think we all feel pretty safe with. It's going to have start on a thin, get my pen started, and go up to the capital line. And I'm using this slope or slant line to keep my letter slanted at the right angle. I'm going to put on a serif at the bottom and I'm flattening my pen angle flatter than a 25 for that. For the two, I'm starting also below the capital line and on a thin and I'm going up to the capital line making a curve but not too deep and almost like an ear and pulling out and it can be just straight and then kind of knife out with a little bit of a lift there or it can also have a little bit of a swerve on it and uh, more like this. You see how I put a slight curve on it but the problem is, is it's tempting to get too wavy there so I actually prefer the straight. The three remember we're working at a 25 degree pen angle, is done in two strokes, starting on a thin, a little bit below the capital line, and this first part of the three is going to be smaller than the second part of the three, so and it, the second curve goes out just slightly past the other one, and stop on the thin, and this isn't a big curve or big scoop or anything, so this one is a pull to the right. We'll do that again. Looks like that. Ends on a thick. Go back into that thick. I like to end a little bit before the X line, the baseline, and put on almost a flat finish with that second stroke. The four, your the inside of the four is going to be um, almost a sharp triangle. So we go on a thin, and it comes a little bit below the top of the base, the the writing line, the baseline there, and I like to keep that pretty straight. And then I go back in and touch that thin and pull down on the correct slope and put on the serif at a flattened pen angle. But you see how that's quite sharp in there. This is maybe a little bit too far out so I'll just do one more. So you don't want the four to be too um, too small, this part of it, otherwise it's it's off balance. The five starts on the thick and you want to leave quite a bit of space to make the bowl of the five. And I like to again stop a little bit before the writing line, the baseline, and pull forward. Again, not a big scoop. I also flatten my pen angle a little bit so this top part is not too thick. So This is not a scoop up. It's pretty soft curve. Flatten my pen angle and see how that's that's really a triangle there that create that's created by that counter space and no sharp corners here where these this comes forward the six 
starts on a thin, maybe even a little bit low, below the capital line. It's got a nice curve, and ends on a thin, goes back into the, that curved stem, and this is kind of an oval shape. That might be a little bit big the way I did that, but let me make another one. Yeah, kind of um, make this, the thin come up a little bit steeper there. You can see how these this one is more round and this is a little more oval. And like the bottom of the three and the five, the top of the six is not a real scoop or a curve down. It's just a slight, barely curved top. The seven starts below the writing line so that you get start on a thin and you need to learn how long to make the top of the seven. So that one felt a little long to me. That feels a little better. And this, I never see a serif on the bottom of the seven, so I guess I would leave it off. I never put one on. The eight in some ways looks a lot like the S. It starts on a thin and does a curve around and the top curve of the 8 is going to be smaller than the bottom curve of the 8. Go back into the thin and make the oval and take your pen and go back into that stem and make your second oval and you can see how these two are, are different sizes, so, and yet it still has that slant without any sharp, whoops, that <laughs> didn't really need to make that quick of a exit, I'm going to kind of repair that, but, um, yeah, it's got a nice um, slant to it and um, a flow to the eight. Nine starts on a thin, and you're going to make, again, kind of an oval, it's not real round, ends on a thin, go back into that thin, curve around. I like to stop a little bit before the bottom, touches the bottom line, and again, a flat, flattish finish where you're pulling forward, so that's a, a third stroke to the nine. Kind of an oval curving around. Generally that'll touch. That one feels a little too slanted to me. There we go. And then, actually I don't really like that nine either. I don't know. Usually nines flow right out of my pen, so that's just the way some days are. That's probably the best of the three. You can go back and untouch that so it touches the the um, into the stem. The zero is not an an O or not a, a a circle. I guess I'm trying to say it is more of an oval, and part of that is because it'll just take up too much space on a page and look like a big clunky shape and um, so you want to get it the right shape and I'll write 2023 to When you write the numerals, you generally want to give plenty of space to them rather than um, crowding them together. So when I make this three, I don't want to crowd right up to that two. Notice how I've got that space uh, end on that thick there. Come back around a little before the baseline there and put on the bottom part of the letter, or bottom part of the numeral. And those are your numerals in italic.